U.S. Of course, then the attention was front and center, as you would have expected on that Fed decision overnight. Simon Michelle live from FIG for you with the very latest. Simon, welcome. I mean, that sizable fall in the 10-year on that CPI miss kind of was always going to be the one to see a recovery on leading into uh, this release overnight, right? So are you gratified that that sort of ran according to script? Well, it's really interesting. Good afternoon, Carson, that, uh, you know, the, the Fed definitely stuck to increasing rates in June, mm -hmm. um, also stuck to the pathway forward with another rate increase uh, this year, a three more in 2018. Mm. Whereas the market uh, moved in the opposite direction. We saw the 10 year, as you suggested, mm -hmm. there, hit an all time low for the year at 2.13 percent half a percent lower than the peak we saw back in March. And interestingly as well, if you go a little bit longer out to the 30 year, that's now down at a, a year lower as well at 277. That's been as high as 322. So that yield curve, as you suggest, mm. buying into those lower inflation forecasts, those softer numbers are starting to lower uh, rates out in that longer end, mm. uh, even on the back of the Fed sticking to that tightening uh, mm. overnight. In fairness, it did lower its projections on inflation uh, but at the same time, do you think it was too heroic to alongside that up the GDP forecasts whilst also lowering the unemployment rate? Well, this is an interesting thing. They said um, on the back of the uh, hike, they said that they weren't adjusting their dot points because they believed that the strong in, uh, employment numbers would eventually lead to a bit of a pickup in inflation and they didn't really want to adjust the path, but yet they did, as you say, uh, you know, mm. drop their forecasts and, and obviously we've seen the same in growth. And that's really what we've seen happening in that 10-year rate. That 10-year rate has been moving down, uh, really mirroring that uh, uh, you know, softer inflation expectation and obviously the softer growth numbers we've, uh, we've been seeing both mm. in the US and uh, here in Australia. Do you think th there is this kind of belief widespread now that they have for too long uh, seen this uh, outlook as a glass half full scenario and particularly you know on the next course for the USD that these losses will not be transient that they could become entrenched uh, contrary to the Fed's own belief that it'll all pass and that will be back to the races and business as usual soon. Look, I think there's two stories here. I think obviously they want to provide a consistent message to the market. So even, you know, when you do start to see some soft numbers coming out, you start to see, um, you know, the, the data not meeting expectation. They're sticking to script. They don't want to adjust it yet. They're talking, you know, um, balance sheet reduction as well, uh, you know, moving that forward. They've got a few sort of levers now uh, rather than just purely the cash rate. Um, if you look at what the market's saying, if you look at the Fed futures at the moment, they don't see another rate increase this year. They see one in 2018 mm. and about a 70% chance in 2019. Now, we know from um, the last couple of years that uh, while the Fed's usually stuck to that messaging and stuck to that uh, pathway forward on rate hikes, mm. um, generally, uh, you know, they've, they've had to adjust that delay uh, uh, and, and, and basically, I suppose, come and meet what the uh, market was telling them. Simon, finally, with the changing of the guard at the very top of the institution, is that an opportunity to maybe recast the outlook afresh and justify that because you are a new broom and old habits can uh, be swept away in that, in that sense? Look, absolutely. I mean, look, you know, I, I suppose that's always a, a possibility. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think, you know, what I t tend to look at and I think, uh, you know, what the market's telling us mm -hmm. is that, uh, you know, they're certainly starting to buy into this softer data. And it's becoming a bit consistent as well. You know, it's, you know, it, it's easy to look through one quarter, uh, maybe look through a couple. But, you know, when you get consistent messaging and, you know, the, uh, the yield curve, those longer rates really over the last two months mm -hmm. continuing to fall, and then we're seeing the data match that. I mean, here in Australia, for example, we saw that drop in the growth rate pretty much mirrored by a drop in the 10-year rate that was both down about 70 basis points year on year. So Speaking of which, well, sovereign bonds across APAC have been uh, basically up across the board. So do, do we expect a continuation now on that trend or when, when do we get a, a, a sort of a ceasefire on those inverse moves? Well, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I, I think the key thing we're looking at at the moment, and you're seeing this reflected in the dollar as well, is that margin between US rates and, uh, and Aussie rates. Mm -hmm. Now, now that you've got uh, the uh, US yield uh, mm -hmm. continuing to move lower, um, you know, Aussies fell on the back of that as well, and we've certainly reached year lows as well uh, overnight mm -hmm. in uh, the Aussie 10 year. Uh, you know, when are we going to see that crossover? When are we going to see those, Euro those uh, uh, US rates move higher than the Australian rates? And what's the impact going to be on the dollar there? You know, mm -hmm. last time we saw that happen, we got a five in front of the Aussie dollar. So, you know, wow. it's going to be really interesting to see what impact mm -hmm. that has, and we're, we're certainly approaching mm -hmm. that point.
Mm -hmm. The only five was the five basis points fall to uh, 2.347, believe, tracking, uh, well, a five bit decline across the Tasman. That's right. I mean, it was down at 233, bounced mm. up a couple of points on the back of that, uh, at the employment um, data that came out at 1130. Um, the same thing in the, the two years, but, uh, you know, it didn't really have as big an impact as you're seeing in uh, other markets. Simon, good to check in. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Carson. Simon, Michelle from FIG, what a week.